Who's ready to rock, Fire Nation? JLD here with another live Q&A podcast where I just answer Fire Nation's questions live on the spot with absolutely no idea what's coming my way. I hope you enjoy. We're going to be diving into game theory and gamification, which is so huge as soon as we finish thanking our sponsor. So why do a vast majority of businesses fail within the first five years? If you were to ask me or my friend Billy Jean, we'd both tell you the same thing. It's because they can't figure out how to get more customers. Ditch the fear you have around paid advertising and learn how to finally make it work for you. Billy Jean has a completely free training that will teach you exactly how to use paid ads to get more customers in any niche. Visit watchbillysvideo.com to access his free training today. Watch Billy's Video. Dot com. Hello. Rob, aka Professor Game, how are you doing today? Very, very good. How's my audio sounding right now? You know, your audio yeah. sounds very acceptable, so uh, thank you for that. <laughs> I, I can move to my microphone on my desk. No, you sound quite you sound quite good. I do have a question though, is um is this logo that I'm looking at? The Professor Game, is that also your podcast logo? Yes, indeed. Very cool. Fire Nation, I'm looking at this green logo that has a pair of glasses with like, it looks like a little Nintendo controller on the left. And then uh, what is on the the other side, the right-hand side with those circle of colors? Those are the other buttons of the Nintendo. That makes a lot of sense there. So this is a Super Nintendo, I'm guessing? Yeah. Super Nintendo, cool. And then below (laughs) it is Professor Game. So Rob, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do, what you have going on. We're going to move into your question. Um, Well, as you said, I have a podcast called Professor Game, which is where I'm where I'm starting right now. I've been going on for around six months with a with a weekly podcast. What I do is I interview experts and practitioners of of gamification, and I try to always um, take it towards um, education, learning, because I, I think that gamification has a lot to offer to to that world. And there's many things that um, can be profited from that. And the idea of this podcast is precisely to inspire teachers, professors, maybe even entrepreneurs who are thinking of creating educational products, who are thinking of offering services, of, of teaching people things and learning. The idea is that they, can get, they get inspiration from, from the, the guests that are there who are, who are world renowned um, experts in the, in the area. I mean, Fire Nation, we need to motivate people. We need to excite people. We need to fire people up. I mean, gamification does so much in this area. It's something that's definitely worthy of looking into. And Rob, just real quick, what would you say is maybe your one favorite thing that you've kind of learned going through this journey about this topic? Um, I think that the main thing, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's like a direct tip because I, I don't think that the, the designs in gamification are a, a, a plug and play solutions. But it's precisely that, that when you, when you really think about your, your customer, about your learner, about the person, you're, you're, as you say, the avatar that you're trying to target, when you really deeply think about that person that you're trying to teach to, when you get into the motivations that that person has and you target that kind of person and their motivations and design specifically for, for one person, for one type of, of person, for one profile, it gets massively different and special results because it's actually geared when people... When people see that, when, when people perceive that they're they're being talked to and they're being spoken to directly and that there's a program that speaks directly to them, uh, I mean, it makes a massive, massive difference. And this is this is, is, is a way of applying something that I've, I've seen not only in gamification, but in many other many other areas. But specifically in gamification, when you use the, the game mechanics, the different game mechanics, you have to think because something sometimes people think of gamification only as competition, for example. And perhaps the person that you're targeting is somebody who's not very competitive. I mean, in general, and I'm generalizing very broadly here, um, female profiles tend to be a lot less competitive than male profiles. So if your target is especially female, you might think that, you know, collaboration is more more of a, of a good target for, for the people that you're targeting instead of competition. So that that's an example of thinking very thoroughly who are what are the people you want to motivate and what actually motivates those people? And Fire Nation, the one thing I really want to hammer home here that Rob's talking about is we are no longer in the one size fits all category. I mean, we are so far past that when it's just like, you know, stamp, 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 everybody gets the same size, everything. We wear those boxy shorts, you know, like nothing. 
nothing is specific for anybody like that that those days are past people want custom now you know you want those custom designed jeans that just fit you perfectly you want that custom experience that's just perfect for you you know you want alexa you know to answer your specific question like you know not just a broad vague question that you know is just the answer for everything like you want that custom experience so how are you in your business in your life giving your customers your listeners your clients your viewers whoever that might be people following you that are consuming your content, how are you giving them a custom experience? And you know, one way that I'm actually doing that right now, and I'm pretty fired up about it because of the results that I'm getting is every time somebody joins one of my communities, you know, whether it be Podcasters Paradise, or they go through the completely free training of three hours to your big idea, and they join Real Revenue, or you know, any n- n- any number of ways that they're actually, you know, joining one of my products, or I should say, by, uh, investing in one of my products, or joining one of my one of my communities, I'm getting a notification on my phone and the app is called Bonjoro. And I just uh, see, oh, Rob just joined Podcasters Paradise. Boom. I pull it up. I hit record and I say, Rob, just want to say thank you for putting your faith and your trust in Kate and myself for joining Podcasters Paradise. We're not going to let you down. I'm proud of you for the investment that you made. Like we're going to do this together. I have your back. You know, make sure to jump in the Facebook group right now and introduce yourself. Say hi, because this is your family now and I'll catch you in paradise. And then I click send. And guess what? That was 15, 20 seconds of my life, but now Rob has this custom video from me, because it is, it's a custom video that I created just for him and him alone, and think about how that makes him feel as somebody who maybe just dropped 800, you know, 900, $1,000 to join, you know, a podcasting community. I mean, that makes him feel like, wow, I think I maybe did make the right decision because John really does care about me. Kate really does care about me. Like they have my back. So how are you creating these custom scenarios to really make people that are coming into your world feel like they want to be in your world? So that app is Bon Joro, B-O-N-J-O-R-O. And I'm just having a heck of a time with it. A lot of fun. Uh, Rob, let's kind of dive into your question right now. So um, I called you up. Um, you said you have a question and uh, let's fire it off. Well, John, um, the truth is I, I joined Podcasters Paradise because I knew I was, I was going to get into a, 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 a podcast. So I said, well, what better place can I go to than Podcasters <laughs> Paradise? So that, that's, that's a way I got into your community. And, and certainly that, that, that thing that you mentioned of the personalization is is something that is fantastic, and I, I think you do it phenomenally. So that's that's the first thing um, that that I wanted to thank you for for that community because it's amazing. Um, I mean, like I don't know, like fifty percent of the things that I've done for sure are, are like directly almost copy pasted from, from Podcasters Paradise. Um, so I wanted to first off thank you for that. And and my question, I, I actually wanted to have it very related to the to the podcast because you're you're like the biggest figure that at least that I've I've seen in, in the podcasting world, and I and I love what you do and, and the community that you create. So precisely re- regarding podcasts, I know you you always talk about saying like, well, here's your avatar. That's that's the person that that you're going to target. So create it specifically for your avatar. Um, however, I, I have to say, and, and this is a small confession here, um, I, I do feel that my audience, even though it's, it's been growing consistently, I, I am not sure I'm, I'm getting the levels of engagement that I would like. I have an email list. I, I write emails. I respond to every single person who writes to me. So I try to engage personally with every person so, so that they, you know, they, they feel that they're within that community. But I'm not getting, like, for example, the other day I created a survey and uh, to, to get the feedback from people in something very specific I was creating. And I, 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 was, I was not very happy about the results. So I would like to know if there's, if you have like a recommendation, not only for, for increasing your audience, um, or what would you say is, is very imp- a very important way for engaging with the audience? How, how do you get those, those results of people actually engaging back with you? I mean, not only being willing to engage with them, but that they actually get into and, and take action and engage with with the host and and for example because I, i've also heard you talking about precisely understanding deeper your audience and making surveys and maybe talking even one-on-ones and that's actually the direction i'm going to go rob because that's something that i have seen to the nth level that is just such a game changer because um it always does start with one so let me ask you a question like when somebody sends you an email or replies to one of your broadcast emails that you send out you said that you always respond to them you know via email personally like that's awesome and that's that's a step you definitely want to do and if anybody you know was ever to reach out to you on facebook or on instagram or on 
any social media platform and just mention in any way, shape, or form, like, thank you for the show or that you like the show, I'm sure that you reply to them as well. But let me ask you, how many of those people that you said have responded back to either your um, output or reached out to you just to say thank you, how many of those people have you responded with can we jump on a one-on-one call? Have you asked anybody that question? No, I haven't. That is so key for so many reasons. Like I like I can just tell you the number of absolute gold like aha moments that I received from doing this back when I launched Entrepreneurs on Fire. I would do this very often in the first three months. Somebody would respond back to one of my emails like, thanks, John, this is this is a cool email or this is a cool episode. I'd say, Rob, can we jump on a quick call? I'd reply with that. Just a five minute call. I just have a couple questions. I just want to, you know, say thank you in person for your kind response. And, you know, I just have a couple quick questions for you that could really help me out. And, then, you know, some people will say, um, I don't really feel comfortable with that because you know, they might be nervous. But then some people <laughs> will say, hey, yeah, sure. Here's my number or here's my Skype ID or whatever it might be. What You know, let, let's do this. And you jump on a call with them and you ask them a few questions. And one of the questions you ask them always when, you, when you're on the call with them one-on-one is, how did you find out about me? Like, how did you hear about my show? Because then, Rob, you can really start to realize how people that are engaging with your content, so these are your, your best and, and most um, worthy and valuable listeners, like, how are they finding out about your show? People that are actually responding and engaging, you know, at least on a, on a surface level at first, via email and social media, how are they finding out about your show? So you can start to see the themes when you start having a few of these conversations about how most people are actually finding out about your show for the first time. And there's going to be some really interesting stories there. And you can really then start focusing in on one or two of these niches that are just sending you all this this traffic and, and, these, and, and these great listeners that you never would have even known about or thought about if you hadn't had these conversations. And then you're going to be able to really, you know, pour some of that igniter fluid on those areas to really kind of, you know, make that a, even a better way to get inbound traffic. And then number two, you're going to ask them, you know, what do you specifically like about this show? Like, what do you like about the show? Like, what are some things that you like? Like, if I was to ask you, what are your two or three um, most favorite moments of the show that you've listened to? What do you like? What are those things? And like, I'll tell you like an example for me, like when I was asking that question, a lot of people were coming back and saying, you know, John, I loved when one of your guests didn't really answer the question fully and you really held their feet to the fire and you made them <laughs> answer that I question. Love that. <laughs> See, there you go. You're saying that too. And like, I literally never would have thought of that. In fact, I would have been almost the opposite of, of like, do my listeners think I'm being kind of rude here by like making this person answer the question or like kind of like, do they think I'm kind of bullying a little bit when I do that? Because I'm not really trying to bully or do anything except I really want to give my listeners the a full and the best answer possible. And when my guest comes on and gives what I consider not a full answer or, you know, not even answering the question at all. I'm like, Hey, you know, you're not running for office here. Like, you know, you can't dodge questions. You're not a politician. <laughs> like I'm asking you a direct question. Let's do this. Let's go, let's go deep here. Um, and my, I had so many people that would come back to me that would say that, that I never would have thought of that. And here you are, you know, kind of confirming that, um, as we're talking as well. And so guess what that meant? That meant that I'm not going to now go out there and search for it, but when it happens, I'm going to feel very comfortable that my listeners really like that about my show. So I'm going to make sure that that stays apart. So when I might've like cut that out because I'm like, well, you know, maybe my listeners think I'm kind of being a bully here. No, I'm going to be like, you know what? My listeners know that I'm standing up for them and I'm standing up for the fact Fact that this person owes us the full answer. So that was a huge revelation to me that I got from those one-on-one phone conversations. Then I would ask, what don't you like about the show? And, and some things that would come back over and over again is, uh, you know, sometimes you just let your, uh, you, they say this, like you just let your guest or your guest just kind of rambles on for a while. And it's just like, you know, a 10 or 15 minute monologue. And that just kind of gets, you know, kind of repetitive because they're kind of just saying the same thing and yada, yada. And they're just say, repeating themselves in different ways. And then I would say, you know what? You're right. I felt that, but I never wanted to be rude and like interrupt my guests when they're on this flow. But here's my listeners, the people that really matter, the people that make the show worth creating are telling me that they don't like that. And so then I started getting very, um, I don't want to use the word aggressive, but I was just being very aware that if my listener was going, uh, sorry, if my guest was going on uh, a little too long on my show, I'd cut them off. I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, hey, like Rob, I hear where you're going with this, but let me just kind of cut in here for a second. And I would absolutely do that. And then, you know, I could go back after in the edits and, and kind of 
uh, it's called like silencing out where we were talking over each other. So it wasn't like uh, we were just having this really bad audio exchange. Like it sounded like they, they stopped talking almost as soon as I started talking. So it wasn't this kind of like confusing <laughs> moment. Like that's kind of the beauty of podcasts. You can do that kind of stuff. And excuse me. And yeah, the, the two tracks, two separate tracks. is amazing. Two separate tracks are so amazing. So, so key for all those reasons. And when I realized that my guest did not like that, guess what? That became a major focus for me. And so by asking those questions, you know, um, how'd you hear about me? What do you like about the show? What don't you like about the show? And then I always end with the question, what is your biggest struggle right now? You're my listener. You're tuning into my podcast. You're obviously tuning in to get answers to questions, to get solutions to struggles. And hopefully my show is providing that for you. But if I know even more at the core what your biggest struggles are, I'll be able to make sure that I provide even more of the solutions. And Rob, all of the different calls to action that I have on my podcast, you know, the free funnel course, the free podcast course, the most recent thing that I just created, which I'll dive into in a second, came from these conversations because I still have these conversations. And guess what? These Q&A shows have now kind of become in some, in some ways, you know, those conversations of just talking with my listeners. Because, you know, if you're following me on Facebook, if you're following me on Instagram and you're seeing me post this, like you're a follower of mine, like you listen to my content likely. And so this is allowing me to, to keep my finger on the pulse. And so for you at your stage, you need to make sure that you are going all in on this stuff with anybody reaching out to you. Ask them those four questions. Because when I kept asking my audience these questions, they came back and they were saying very consistently, let's just rewind three years ago, John, I'm really struggling setting and accomplishing goals. What did that turn into? The Freedom Journal, which now has $1.25 million in sales because I just created the solution to what my listeners were telling me they were struggling with. And then people are saying, I, then two years ago, people were saying, John, I, I'm really struggling with this focus. I'm getting distracted. I don't feel like I'm being productive. I'm not like disciplined like you are. They kept saying like military, military, military. And I was like, yeah, the military had something to do with it. But let's be honest, like, you know, that was like 15 years ago. Like, it was not like I was in the military yesterday. Like, there's more to it than that. So the Mastery Journal. And now the Mastery Journal has over $500,000 in sales. What did I do? I created a solution to what they told me their problem was. And I have both, John. I have, I have to say <laughs> yes. it. I have, I have both journals. I love it. Podcasters paradise. And I just wanted to jump in for, for a second because exactly that, like that fourth question is, Eventually, I, I do want to get into providing further value. And that's precisely where I want to make sure I have the engagement with my audience to be able to ask them that question and, and be able to move further. And you have to. And you have to ask them that question because they're going to give you that the goal to continue to move forward. But it starts today. These are the times to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations to get that ball moving because that first question how are you finding out about me? That's going to be able to allow you to focus on the things that are working to grow your audience. And you start to do those things. And so with my audience and they were coming back, you know, this past year and saying, John, what was my audience saying? Fire nation. Well, after we thank our sponsor, I will tell you right away. Let's do this. All right, Fire Nation. So I have Billy Jean on the mic for this incredible sponsorship read. And Billy, I think you have a question for me. You've interviewed thousands of entrepreneurs, some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, most influential entrepreneurs in the world. But on the flip side of that, what's the stat? Like 90, 95% of businesses fail within the five, first five years. Yeah. And my question to you is why? What is that one thing that literally 95 out of 100 people are not understanding? Billy, they don't keep generating revenue. They don't keep bringing in customers and clients and they can't keep the lights on, period. It breaks my heart. And the, you know what it is, is I think too many businesses that literally believe that waiting on referrals is a way to run a consistent, predictable and stable business and it's virtually costing everybody everything. Literally, people take pride in the fact that they don't advertise. Like, oh, my whole business is organic and referrals. I would never pay for advertisements. And it's the most ignorant and arrogant standpoint that I see people take that's killing them. And so right now we have these tools available in 2018, 19, where Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, you can get in front of your ideal customer for one cent three cents for a view and people are afraid to take advantage of those opportunities because they don't understand one thing how to get an roi on their ads 
There's no shortage of customers. There's just a short of, of businesses who understand how to turn clicks into customers. And that's what I want to teach them, John. Yes. Stop going out of business. There's no reason. Like right now, if the only thing that's stopping you from growing your business is just getting more customers who can actually afford your services that you like working with, then you got to show up to my training. Like I, I literally made a video, John, that outlines exactly how to use paid advertisements to get customers for any business in any niche. I don't care if you do product sales, physical products. I don't care if it's B2B. I don't care if it's B2C. Whatever your excuse is, I'm telling you, you are one solid advertisement away from having predictable sales in your business and being able to truly scale and not fail. I want to watch the video right now. You know what it's called? Watchbillysvideo.com. <laughs> Watchbillysvideo.com. Fire Nation, you heard it from Billy Jean, the genius himself. Watchbillysvideo.com. Wait, John, here's the best part. It's freaking free. And it's free. There's, no, like, there's nothing. Just literally, I'll send it to you. Like, just I'll text it to you. I'll email it to you. Whatever the heck. Just go there and watch the video and just tell me it's not helpful. Love it. Watchbillysvideo.com. And so with my audience and they were coming back, you know, this past year and saying, John, I just, you know, either don't have an idea that was a one camp or they were saying, John, I have all of these ideas, but I'm not sure which is the best idea to go in on. Like I was realizing that was two camps of people were, that were really struggling. Either they don't have an idea or they have a bunch of ideas. They're not sure which is the best idea. And that's why I said, it's time for me to create the solution for this. So I sat down and I created a three hour training that's completely free. It's called three hours to your big idea. And that is the promise. That's the pledge that if you take this training in three hours, you will find your big idea. And now, Rob, think about that. Think about now all the hundreds and then thousands and potentially tens of hundreds of thousands of people that are gonna go through this completely free training, you know, that are gonna give me their email address in exchange for access to this training. And then the training is gonna just give them their big idea. And that's now me giving them this huge win, this huge solution. They may have known, liked, and trusted me before because of the podcast, but now it's just to the next level. It's completely to the next level because I just gave them a huge personal win. I just gave them their big idea that they can go all in on. And then, and then guess what's next? I'm like, Hey, fire nation. Now you have your big idea. I'm fired up for you. I hope you're fired up as well. How about we now take your big idea and we turn it into real revenue? And guess what? That's the next step in the funnel. And that's not free. That's a paid course. That's going to be something that they go into next because now guess what? They have their big idea. They're fired up. Now let's turn that big idea into real revenue revenue. So that's just how it starts because those conversations allow you to find the biggest struggle and allow you to get people to, um, or, and allow people to give you an aha moment that you can then provide the solution for in the, in the, in the form of a product or a service or a community or a course or a book or a mastermind or one-on-one -on -one coaching, like any of those different things, it gives you that opportunity. So I'm going to turn it back over to you, Rob, for a second and, and let you kind of give some feedback on that. But first, Fire Nation, if you're pretty fired up about that free training, your big idea .io. Get over there, sign up, get your big idea in three hours. Let me know how you like it. Go, Rob. So um, the first thing is that I've heard you say a million times, do things that don't scale. And that's that, that's like the first thing that has to be done that doesn't scale. And, and I completely, I love that feedback that you just gave me because those questions, I mean, you, you probably can arrive at that through perhaps thinking for a while in common sense, but getting it directly from somebody who's, who's done it, who's, who's done that and who, who knows that that has worked. And who's still doing it, Rob. I'm still yeah. doing it. And this is at, the, you know, I'm at the, I'm at the multi seven figure mark and I'm still doing these things because I never would have come up with three hours to your big idea by myself because I, I maybe not wouldn't have thought about it because guess what? I really haven't struggled to come up with a big idea in a little while. I used to, and I have in the past, but it's been a while. So it wasn't top of mind. These conversations brought it top of mind. Definitely. And, and, and that's why I love the, the, the answer because it's very specific. It's very detailed. And, and, and also, even though it's very detailed, it's very applicable to, to so many people in so many areas. And that, that those things that don't scale, um, people are, I mean, I always get that thing of, yeah, yeah, but you do that and it won't scale. Well, that's <laughs> fine. That's not a problem. I mean, you, you can get, I mean, as you, as you, as you've said a million times, um, you can get some ideas and you can think, get things that actually do scale, 
through doing the things that don't scale. So I love that feedback. Um, I, I just have to say I, I, I love it. I, I, I would like to have more words. I'm normally... I'm um, having a lot more opinions, but in this case, it's just that I, I love it. I mean, <laughs> as we were talking about previously on, on, on personalization, this is the most personalized you can get and get the people to feel that, that you know, they're not just your audience. They're, they're a, a, a valuable member of your community and that they will get value from whatever you're, you're doing. And, and if that feedback that, that you, somebody gave you, they see it implemented later. I mean, I'm sure that's a person that's going to be buying or, or going to your next product or doing your next thing. Is that somebody who said, well, that was me, or maybe it was me and, another, and somebody else, but that was me. I, I'm included in that idea that, that John had, that Rob had. So I really, really, really want to get into that because it, it came from me. And, and again, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's this guy who talks about gamification. And one of the, the, the strategies that he talked about is, is ownership. Once you feel something is yours, you don't want to let it go. You don't just want to let anybody take it. If, if, they, if, if you didn't have a pen, but all of a sudden somebody gives you a pen, it's yours. You don't want to give it away because it's yours. I mean, that's, that's the difference between any pen that was on the table and the one that you have. And that's just a very simple example. But owning the course that John Lee Dumas is launching on Podcaster's Paradise, because he had a call with me and I asked him because I didn't know what to do with, with my podcasting. I say, well, I got this idea from listeners and say, well, that was probably me who asked him for, for this course. It's like the thing that I want to do, the thing I want to get into. So it's it's giving you that that precisely that game strategy. When when you get into a game, normally what's the first thing that they they tell you, they ask you for your name. So they want to call you John, they want to call you Rob or whatever you want to be called. And every time that a, a, one of these non non personal characters addresses you, he's going to say, "Hey John." Um, uh, what are you doing about this and that? <laughs> so that way you feel it's actually you. It's not just a random character in the world. It's about you. So I love that. I, I, I completely love what you said. Okay, completely off topic question. Kind of, not completely, just pretty off topic. <laughs> Have you seen or, or read the book, I should say first, Ready Player One? I haven't. I, I Actually, I, I live in, in Spain, in Madrid. And I have a colleague here who, who said, you have to go and see the movie in 4D. <laughs> and I said, well, there's a crucial question that I have here. And it's very important for me. I, I do speak Spanish. I'm, I'm a Spanish speaker, native Spanish speaker. But um, is, is the 4D movie also in English, which is the original language? I said, oh, God, it's not. But, you know, the translations here in Spain are amazing. I said, no, it's horrible. It's, it's horrible. horrific <laughs> to listen to a character and not have his voice. And listen to the same mm. guy who, you know, talks in cartoons. So. Well, Rob, let me just tell you this. The movie's okay. And it really has okay. nothing to do with the book. I mean, it, 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 I can't say that. It loosely follows the book. But the book's unbelievable. So just go to Kindle. Get the book by Ernest Klein. It it was my favorite book, and I feel like anybody that's in the gamer gamification like area, um, this is an absolute must read. So, I, like I said, it was slightly off topic, but um, another question I want to ask you is: Please, are you going to take my training three hours to your big idea? I'm already subscribed to your email list. Yes. I'm waiting eagerly to get the first <laughs> <laughs> the first email that says it's live. Let's go and do this. Your big idea.io. Join Fire Nation. If you're listening, Fire Nation, join other people in Fire Nation because this training I, I put so many man hours into is completely free. And what's exciting and cool, and I hope you do this as well, Rob, is I've spent so much time and I've used all of you know the brain power and knowledge and experience that I've gathered to create what I've called a super funnel. And this is the top of the super funnel is this three hours to your big idea. And so what's going to be beautiful about it for anybody that goes through this, yourself included, Rob, is you take like what I'm doing in this funnel and just apply it to what you're doing. Have this incredibly valuable free training and something in your area and then take people through this process because, you know, it goes into this course, which by the way is absolutely irresistible, the, the real revenue course, the price point, you're just going to be like, I cannot believe that you're literally giving it away at this price point because I'm way over delivering with the irresistible offer. Then, you know, there's an elite mastermind opportunity. Then there's more private with workshops and day with JLDs. And it's just this whole interconnected thing that, you know, Kate and myself and the whole EO Fire team have been working on for a lot of 2018 here. And what excites me is that people are going to be able to see this, consume it, go through it, and then apply it to their business and their niche because it's just going to work. And this is what's really exciting because guess what? I learn from other people. You know, I learn from Russell Brunson on funnels. You know, I learn from Pat Flynn on video. I learn from Lewis Howes on Instagram. Like I learn from everybody around and I look to like to apply these
these things. And anybody listening too, you should be doing the exact same thing. So Rob, it was great chatting with you today. Can I add just one last thing? Add one last thing. Precisely on your course and on real revenue, because the only thing I regret about Podcasters Paradise is I got the email when you said, this is no longer going to be a a, a lifetime membership. And I didn't jump in at that time. And that was (laughs) certainly the best price point, the best time to join. And I didn't. So my biggest regret was that one. So now that you're doing this this course right now, and I'm sure the price point is going to be oh, yeah. amazing to, to get started, um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to jump in. Don't have regrets, Fire Nation. Don't have <laughs> regrets. So, Rob, thanks for jumping in there. It was a pleasure chatting with you today, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Sure thing. Well, Fire Nation, I hope that you understand the power of gamification and you get a little excited about the game theory. It's pretty exciting, but guess what? None of this matters until you can focus on an amazing big idea that you have and that you can crush and dominate. And guess what? I have a free training that's going to get you there. So visit yourbigidea.io and you will have your big idea in just three hours. And then the sky's the limit, yourbigidea.io. And I'll catch you there, Fire Nation, or I'll catch you on the flip side. Fire Nation, what if I told you that you are one solid ad away from having predictable sales in your business and being able to truly scale? You probably ask me how to create that ad. Well, my friend Billy Jean put together a completely free training where he does just that. Learn Billy's proven and repeatable three-step process to generate leads and sales for any product or service. The only thing stopping entrepreneurs from using the same strategy is knowing it exists and learning how the heck to make it work. Visit watchbillysvideo.com to access his free training today. Watchbillysvideo.com.